tails. Heads. Damn it! Ah, don't pout. Your eyes get all small and piggy when you're sulking. How are you planning on getting in there anyway? I'll charm my way in. Well, I hope you brought some secret charm powder or something. Otherwise, you're in big trouble. I've got better weapons in mind. Like what? You've been staring at them all afternoon. Huh? How'd you like to be swept off your feet? Good afternoon. My name is Mia Hegg. I'm from Men of Influence magazine. Men of Influence? What on earth are you doing here? This is the residence of Baron Archibald Dumas, is it not? Yes. Baron Dumas certainly seems to qualify as a man of influence, wouldn't you say? I suppose it would depend on how you choose to define influence. He is the president of Dumas Industrial Enterprises. Ah. He's wealthy. True. He's well respected. Hmm. He's dashing. <coughs> He's debonair. L listen, this is all very educational, but what exactly do you want? I was hoping to profile Baron Dumas for our Perfect Live series. Each month we cover a different person whose lifestyle and disposition exemplify perfect living. And you wish to include his lordship in this series? Yes. The idea is to penetrate the myth and get to know the man. His pastimes, his ambitions, his accomplishments, the things that make him tick. I see. He's a model aristocrat. Ah. Someone our readers can look up to. Of course. Will you excuse me for a moment, Miss Haig? I don't think I could forgive myself if I were to let this sublime opportunity pass by. I will discuss your request with his lordship and return presently with his answer. Thank you. Please, wait here. I shan't be a moment. Very well. His Lordship has agreed to see you. Excellent. This should be amusing. What do you mean? Nothing. Follow me, please. Miss Haig, sir. Splendid. Show her in. I'll leave you to your interview, darling. I'll be shopping for the rest of the afternoon. 
Yes, yes. Have a marvelous time, Chipmunk. Don't call me that. As you wish, my love. Pip pip. He's rather larger than I expected. Ah, yes. He's a big bundle of charisma and intelligence. If you're lucky, perhaps he'll regale you with his rousing safari adventures. Good day, Baron de Mor. Goodness, had I known you would be so sumptuous, I might have preened. Care for a drink? No, thank you. It's a little early for me. Well, I'll indulge for us both in that case. I hope you'll pardon me for saying so, but you're a ravishing girl, simply ravishing. That's very kind of you. I'm sure your wife feels absolutely spoiled by your abundant charm. Oh, she's a lucky old crow. I'll grant you that. Now then, Giles tells me you want to profile me for this magazine of yours, Men of Influence, was it? Yes, each issue we cover a different person in our Perfect Lives series, someone whose lifestyle and achievements serve as inspiration for our readers. Jolly good! You've come to the right place. That will be all, Giles. Actually, sir, I thought it might be worthwhile for me to stay, in case the young lady should desire anything at all. Splendid idea, Pip Pip. Yes, sir. I'll be right over here if you require anything, Miss Haig. Thank you, Baron de Mor. Do you mind if I record our interview? I'd rather devote my attention to you than to my notepad. And who could blame you? Record away, my dear.、Uh, so then, where shall we begin? What's it like being such a prestigious big game hunter? Well, it's difficult to explain to someone who's never experienced the thrill of the hunt. You see, when it's you and your trusty blunderbuss all alone against a ferocious beast, you discover exactly what sort of stuff you're made of. Sounds ghastly. Oh, it takes a special breed of male. I'll grant you that. The merest hesitation could cost you a leg. The most heroic thing you ever did on safari? Ah, yeah, splendid question. Well, I once、um, wrestled a lion to the ground and strangled it to death with my bare hands. Yes, I remember now. My porter had injured his leg and was about to be mauled. Dear Lord,、uh, dear Lord, how courageous! Yes, indeed. Oh, one doesn't really stop to think about these things. One merely acts. It's amazing you didn't come to harm. Yes, well, the Dumas lineage is renowned for resourcefulness and fortitude. I'm sure our loyal readers would love to know what. Hunting rifle, such a magnificent sportsman favors on safari. Ah, yes, indeed. Well, it depends to some degree on the beast I'm tracking. For a tiger, I tend to favor the legendary Matterhorn Model Four Special Issue. Isn't that a twenty-two caliber target rifle? Uh. Seems a bit feeble for a tiger. Yes, but I savor a challenge. How intrepid! You must be quite a marksman to take down a tiger with a single round from a twenty-two. Well, sometimes it takes a few more than that. Still, even three rounds is impressive. It's usually more like seventeen or eighteen. Really, you might find a larger caliber to be more humane. Yes, but then you have to deal with all that nasty recoil. I see. The most dangerous animal you ever faced. I once squared off against a silverback gorilla. A silverback gorilla? Yes, a huge, ferocious, man-eating beast. Man-eating? Quite so. But I was under the impression that gorillas were herbivores and very gentle unless threatened. 
Well, that's true of some gorillas, but this was yeah, one of the dreaded man-eating gorillas of Pakistan. I wasn't aware there were gorillas in Pakistan. Well, that's because few live to tell of them, you see. Well, it's fortunate that you did. Agreed. Silverbacks are by far the most dangerous animals to hunt. I was under the impression that that distinction went to Cape Buffalo. Nonsense. Cape Buffalo are just glorified cows. Hmm. If you were stranded on a desert island, what piece of music would you most want to have with you? Music? Well, anything by Picasso, of course. Pablo Picasso? Yes, that's the chap. The painter. Uh, yes, he was also quite a musician. I wasn't aware. Next. I understand that yours is a steadfastly episcopal lineage. How does your unswerving faith influence your day-to-day -day life? This should be good. Well, you see, faith is. Hmm, how shall I put it? Faith is. Well, we'll simply put, faith. I'm sure plenty of other great men have had keen things to say about faith. Why don't you be a dear and just quote one of them? Smashing idea. Was that a gazelle trophy in the foyer? Ah, yes. Beautiful creature, isn't it? I'm sure it was lovely when it was alive. Aren't they quite fast? Indeed. You must be quite a marksman. True, although I was rather close in this particular instance. How close? Five yards, I should think. I'm impressed. Stalking a gazelle within five yards? I didn't really stalk it, per se. How did you get that close? Well, it was in a pen, you see. Pardon? Some years ago, it occurred to me that all that traipsing about in the wilderness is a dreadful waste of time. I concluded that since what I really want is a handsome trophy to hang on my wall, why not simply put the beast in a pen out of the yard and shoot it there? Save myself the bother of tracking it all over creation. Why not just buy trophies, then? Some men might be satisfied with that sort of compromise, but I only display animals I've collected myself. There's no honor in buying a trophy now, is there? How efficient. What historical figure do you most admire? Hmm, probably uh, Beowulf. Um, I was thinking of historical rather than fictional individuals. Well, I was referring to the historical Beowulf, not the fictional one. You mean the one who slew Grendel and his mother? That's right. He's a fictional character. Yes, I know that, but there was also an historical one. The Beowulf who fought the dragon? Precisely. But there aren't any dragons. Well, not anymore, thanks to Beowulf. There weren't any to begin with, unless you count the dinosaurs, that is. But there weren't any of those wandering around during the time when Beowulf would have lived if he were a real person instead of a fictional character. Are you quite sure? Yes. I see. Well, that's all the questions I prepared. I must confess, I'm positive this will be our most popular Perfect Lives installment yet. Oh, you think so? Absolutely. Rarely does nature combine so many excellent qualities in one man. Our readers will be fascinated and maybe even a bit envious. One can hardly blame them. What I don't understand is where such a busy man finds the time to be a successful business tycoon, loving husband, daring hunter, astute philosopher, cultivated humorist, etc. Aren't you overwhelmed? Well, one learns to delegate. 
For example, although you wouldn't guess it, I'm only peripherally involved with Duma Enterprises these days. Strictly in an advisory capacity, you see, to keep the company on track. How ingenious. Oh, well, I have my moments. But isn't it an awful risk to hand over operations to someone less accomplished in the subtleties of enterprise than yourself? Actually, it's safer that way. Really? Yes, you see, in my experience, the less one knows about running a business, the less he can screw up. I make all the important decisions. The rest is just, you know, paperwork. Still, you wouldn't want your competitors getting their hands on that paperwork. Oh, quite true. But we have a very large safe in which to store it. Safes can be cracked. No, not this one. Even if someone could get inside, he'd still have to get past the security system. Sounds daunting. Oh, it is. There are invisible beams. Infrared? Exactly! If you touch one of them, the door's locked and poison gas is released into the safe. How terrible. Oh, I'd like to meet the burglar who could get in there. It would take a lunatic even to attempt it. Or a fool. Thank you for your time, Baron de Maul. It's been an eye-opening experience. I'm happy to oblige. Uh, never turn your back on a worthy cause, I always say. A worthy meal is more like it. Well done, Agent Archer. You may redeem yourself yet. In the meantime, don't get cocky. There's still work to be done. Command will fill you in on the details. Report there immediately. <laughs>